Hey guys, amigos, uh, I have another Predator 2 here. Uh, tengo otro Predator que voy a enseñar esta vez cómo pintar la piel. Now I'm going to show this time here, not the quills, I already showed the quills. This one actually already has quills, and I have to say, they're amazing. They're very well done and flexible. Um, uh, I was told uh, Joe Dunaway did these uh, quills, and they are amazing. They're very, very cool and well done. I mean, it's, you know, where do you find these? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we're not going to do that, but we will be painting the brow area and, and around back here. Uh, vamos a enseñar cómo hacer la, la diferente pintura en las cejas and the texture in the um, light areas around the foot. Um, we're going to go in with the little veiny things in there. Uh, again, may not be screen accurate, but we're going to give it some, some organic look. Uh, tal vez no va a ser eh, como es en la película, pero vamos a darle más vista a estas áreas que son claras. Um, and how do you do that with the net on? ¿Cómo se hace eso pintar con la red? Well, honestly, you go over the net. You spray actually over the net. And then after, you worry about painting the net. Um, uh, lo que pasa es que pinto sobre la red. No la quito. Entonces ya después que se seque todo, uh, ya pinto la red para que esté todo normal. So, let's get this guy going. So, let's start with the body first. Vamos a empezar con la, el cuerpo. I'm going to seal it with mat in case I mess up. I can clean it up immediately. Voy a sellarlo. En caso de que me equivoque, lo borro rápidamente. Okay, I'm starting with red. Voy a empezar con rojo. Just little modeling. Okay, so now I'm using blue. Ahora estoy con el azul. Now we're going in with some brown to give a little bit of shading. Un poquito de sombras con el café. Now we are going in with a little bit of black. Un poco de negro. Just to soften the, uh, the perfectly rounded spot. Not too much, just some. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, ya está, más o menos. Ahí vamos. I'm going to spray it with clear satin, so it won't be super glossy, but will give it some shine. No estará tan super brilloso, pero le dará algo de brillo. Okay, we're going to paint uh, the brow area. Um, Vamos a pintar la, la parte de las cejas. I covered the eyes with the, uh, uh, silly putty. Uh, tapé los ojos para no pintarlos. Uh, not perfect, but that's okay because there's dark under there, so we can work that. Now the pen I'm using is uh, Bloodline. Es tipo Bloodline. Se llama Bloodline. Tim Gore's Bloodline. And um, he already has a color that works very well for it. So... Uh, if you need to mix it, I don't know, I'm assuming maybe white and yellow and some brown to get the right color. Si necesitan mezclar este color, ya que esto ya viene así. Tal vez empezando con blanco, café un poco de amarillo, me imagino. And we'll be going over the quills, but we'll take care of that later. It's the uh, client wants a different kind of pattern, closer to what he saw in a picture, so... I kind of marked it with pencil. Le marqué con lápiz porque el cliente quiere uh, otra, otra, otras líneas diferentes. And of course, I messed up. Yo la regué. So, again, good thing I seal it. You can just wipe away the mistake. Pueden quitar el error rápidamente. So I'll continue this. Uh, ¿qué más? Uh, we're going to add some more brown over this one, darker brown, just to match the rest of the stuff that he has on here. Because it's a whole different color. So, uh, yeah, the other ones were more like this, but uh, we'll add some brown. Oh, and what I use for this, lo que usé para eso, este color era uh, burnt sienna. Now I'm just going to go in with a darker brown. Which is this one here. I'll just use any dark brown. This one's trauma. Trauma umber. 
from Tim Gore. All right, so after painting the quills, ya después de pintar los los este las espinas, here he is. Okay, so I just kind of repainted the skulls, yeah, uh, the little skeletons. También ya pinté las las este um, calaveras. Just added some dark shading around these areas. Get rid of the uh, uh, overspray. Uh, ahorita lo que voy a hacer es pintar la red. Now, the net is a dark, dark brown. My client wanted it grayish, so I'm going to start painting it gray. Uh, so, again, you don't have to paint it gray. No tienen que pintarlo gris porque mi cliente quiere la red gris. But if, if once you do the paint job on the body and you went over the net, it's no big deal. All you have to do is get uh, either a toothpick or whatever you want uh, to do, get. And what you want to do is just get your paint and carefully lift the, the uh, net up and actually paint the area that you think you went over. If you look at this very closely, even though I painted the whole body, the net doesn't look painted. A pesar de que pinté la, el cuerpo, no se ve pintada la red. It looks great. It looks good. Uh, but again, he wants it gray. No quiere gris el cliente. So you just, you know, uh, where it's not touching, it's no big deal. But where it's touching, donde está tocando, you just grab it from the bottom, lift up, and, and just paint the net. But again, if you don't want to paint it gray, you don't have to. Even after you go over with it the first time, it really doesn't show up as much. So there you have it. Okay guys, so the net is done. Ya está la red. Um, uh, so other future customers don't ask for the net to be the whole thing repainted. It was a bitch. Está muy difícil hacer esa red, pero anyway. Uh, well, you know, it just takes a lot of time. Uh, and it's more expense when you really don't need it because, you know, it doesn't look that bad with the, with the dark brown. Uh, I'll be doing the blades into chrome. Uh, voy a hacer las uh, navajas, no chrome, well, not necessarily chrome, but you know, chrome them up and make them look like metal. Para que se vean más como metal y no como plástico. Uh, these hands are all magnetic. Todo tienen imanes, las manos. Todo está muy bien. They work great. But this guy here... Uh, it has a magnet, tiene su imán, and it stays on, so the tiene, pero, you know, it's kind of weak in reality. I mean, it, it won't fall off unless you, 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 you hit it or something, you know, but I'm going to change this magnet, make it more powerful. As you can see, the whole square had to be removed, actually, almost. I was able to save this little guys which will help uh, tuve que quitarle todo I mean you know it was no other way out so now we're going to create that little square with epoxy and a magnet okay so this is what I got and I'm sorry I didn't record this part because I ran out of battery and I just had to get this done uh, no grabe esta parte se me acabo la pila y tenía que hacerlo but let me try to explain what I did deja explicar lo que más o menos hice now when I did the first magnet it didn't really work because it wasn't long enough so what I actually did, lo que realmente hice después ya que la primera vez no resultó bien el limán que estaba muy abajo. Okay, what I did is I got latex glove. Agarré un, un guante de hule. I would normally use the cellophane uh, plastic. Usaría normalmente el plástico ese muy... que se usan para los sándwiches. So I did this. I put it right over the area here. And I got the magnet. Y agarré el imán después de poner esto. And that's what I got. Okay, so you got the magnet in there. I stretched this out, lo estiré, and I filled this up with the putty. O sea, con la, la epoxy putty, la pasta, la mezclé, I mixed it up, pushed it all the way, way in there, pushed it in, pushed it in, and when it was all in there, I got the hand, and I pushed the hand way inside and held it in place until it dried. Lo mantuve hasta, hasta que se secó uh, bien duro. And then when I took it out, so I left everything dry. Then it was nice and hard. Estaba bastante seco y duro. I pulled this out. 
took this out and the shape was already on here. And as you can see now, it's a more powerful magnet. So it's, you know, the other one was very wiggly. This one is, has a nice pull. Ahora si ya es bastante macizo. Okay, what you want to do is paint them black, pintar los negros. Now what you want to do is gloss the black. Now you can use gloss black, but I like to go with flat black because it covers a lot quicker than gloss black. A mí me gusta usar el, el negro opaco porque pinta mejor que si agarran el negro que tiene ya el brillo. So what I do, instead of giving it different coats of gloss, I buy this stuff. Uso esto. Triple thick. Uh, this gives it a quick triple thick gloss. And it's faster and it makes it a lot better than going back and forth and to get a, a perfect gloss. So, here we go. Okay, so after that dries, I use mirror chrome. This is para el cromo. You want to mist it. And once that's dry, it looks pretty good. Yeah, se seco, se ve muy bien. Um, you can buff it a little bit with something soft. Con algo muy suavecito lo pueden pulir. I don't have anything with me but my tie, so I'll just buff it a little bit with my tie, con mi corbata. And there you go, se ve mucho mejor, better than plastic. I don't know if the camera is capturing, but there you go. And we can do a little weathering with some brown and black, un poquito de café negro, para que no se vea tan limpia so it don't look as clean okay guys so here he is i hope you learned something espero que hayan aprendido algo uh, okay guys uh, hasta la próxima see you next time